So we're looking now then at a measure of um, the alignment and the flexibility around the hip in the frontal plane. So as we stand on two feet, our weight is equally distributed between foot to foot. And if I want to stand onto my left leg, I need to be able to shift my pelvis to the side, lift my right leg up, and I want my pelvis to remain in horizontal alignment. And that comes about through action of our hip abductor muscles. But when we're abducting the hip, we really want our deep gluteal muscles to be working. So our gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. But if they're not working well, then the tensor fasciolata can often take over and that would lead to overactivity of that muscle and potential tightening along the iliotibial band. So this is a measure of the subject's ability to passively adduct their hip so that the foot moves to midline. And the limiting factor to that, other than osteological factors, would be the iliotibial band. Now, of course, the iliotibial band is fixed to the femur, but it has superficial and deeper portions, so it's the superficial portion which should be able to slide. And when we have uh, a change in tone of the hip musculature, sometimes we find that this, the adduction movement is limited. So this is a, a, a test which is relevant to single leg standing, but it's also relevant to ITB friction syndrome, as we mentioned in the lecture. So we're starting off with our subject lying on our couch. So if you could just um, turn over to your side to face the camera. So I've got her head supported. Because you're on your side, you're a little bit un un um, unstable. So I'm going to bend that underneath knee. So to start with, I want the pelvis stacked. So I want the greater trochanter on top, um, directly over the greater trochanter underneath. My hand goes onto the rim of the iliac crest. So make sure that you don't put your hand over the greater trochanter because that will prevent the hip movement. So my hand is resting on the pelvis. And the first movement I do is to abduct the hip and take the full weight of the hip itself. So I'm then going to press down onto the pelvis. I'm stabilizing the pelvis, allowing the weight of the leg to come down in the body plane. So I'm avoiding going into flexion. So I'm in line with the body, stabilize the hip and allow the leg to gently adduct. And I want to be able to come down to midline. Now, if you're very flexible, your foot will come right down into the couch. But if you're very inflexible, the hip tends to stop here. And then once, once you've got that information um, and you're in that fully stretched position, you can then turn that into a clinical test of ITB friction syndrome. So you could be palpating over the greater trochanter or palpating over the femoral epicondyle if that is an area of pain. So in this position, once I've got that stretch and I've determined that this is end range, I can then palpate and flick the iliotibial band over the epicondyle or flick the iliotibial band across the, um, the uh, trochanteric bursa. And if that is reproducing the patient's symptoms, then it becomes a positive test. So that's our over test or over maneuver for tightness in the tensor fasciolata and iliotibial band.